welcome to a really croaky, so pretty kitty. Um, I'm going to apologise in advance. I've had a really sore throat and it doesn't hurt anymore, but I sound a bit hoarse, so please forgive me if I have to stop for a drink now and again. Um, welcome to my channel. This is where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. And I'm sorry I haven't been on for a while. Um, you guys who already subscribe and follow me will know that the last set of videos was a weekly vlog where I tried to turn my stash into cash and um, I wasn't terribly successful at that but I did make a lot of things so today's uh, video is a bumper issue makes video um, so go and get a cup of tea if you haven't got one already because it might be quite a long one. Um, I've got the box full of bits and pieces that I made down here. First you'll notice um, a large bunch of fabric flowers right next to me so these I made um, if you haven't watched the last video, hop back onto my list of, of videos. I, I'm going to try and see if I can figure out how to put links and stuff in. But um, I made these flowers for the school spring fair. Um, it was the day before Mother's Day. And uh, I really had this idea that what I wanted to do was turn all the bits of fabric in my stash that weren't really big enough to make garments out of into things that I could sell on a stall. And I made this beautiful vase full of um, fabric flowers, which I absolutely love. And when I finished it, I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to sell them. And luckily nobody bought any. So I got to keep my bunch of flowers and they live here on my kitchen table. And they're just great because they are never going to die. They look really pretty. <clears throat> Excuse me. All the fabrics remind me of certain bits and pieces um, to do with my history with sewing. So this one here, you can see that's the same fabric as the jumpsuit that I wear in the opening sequence of my videos. There's um, another piece here, one of the first dresses that I ever made that actually fit and I could wear outside. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm really pleased I didn't sell any of those, to be honest, because they cheer me up every time I look at them. Um, some of the other things I made, um, I made a whole bunch of these little purses, which you will have seen um, in my last set of videos. So these are popper pouches, they're fully lined, um, and they have my little So Pretty Kitty tag on the side. And do you know what? I didn't sell a single one of these either. I think it was probably the wrong place to um, sell, um, it was mostly kids buying things for their mums for Mother's Day. I priced these at, I think, £14.50 or £15, something like that. And, um, yeah, I was thinking maybe someone, a husband, might buy one for their wife, but no such luck. So I came home with all of those. I've sold a couple to friends and family but I have got still three left. So my plan to open an Etsy shop is still uh, happening. I have um, started taking photos of things and uploading them. It's really kind of time consuming. You need to write a really accurate description. The photos need to be taken against things like rulers and other objects to show scale. So I'm taking my time over it to make sure it's really nicely laid out, but um, yeah, I came, I came back with all of those. Uh, shall I start by saying what I did sell? I did sell um, some tiaras that I made, so I don't have any of those to show you, but the night before the craft fair I suddenly thought to myself maybe I ought to make a couple of things that were just a pound or a pound fifty for the children to buy. And so I used the Brothers Scan and Cut <clears throat> to cut some cardboard sort of sparkly tiaras and some bookmarks. I think I've got one in my box, so just let me have a look and I'll show you. Maybe I didn't, oh, here we are. So I made some of these bookmarks using the scanning cut and some cardboard and some sort of rainbow wool that I had in my stash. I priced these at a pound each and I think I sold two. So yeah, I came home with three of those um, and I don't think that's worth putting that on Etsy, so the kids are gonna probably have those for when they're reading. Uh, oh, there's another one of those popper pouches with the giraffes on. Um, what else did I sell? I sold one of my zipper pouches as well. So I'll show you the ones I've brought back. 
I love these zipper pouches. In fact, you know, I just want to put everything in a zipper pouch, but they didn't sell. I priced them at um, six pounds, which to be honest with you, by the time you've laid out for the zip and um, the time you've spent making them, I didn't think that was too much to ask, six pounds, but they didn't sell. So here we are. This one has got peacock fabric, um, a lovely blue zipper, and then luminous green. These sort of acid luminous colours are all coming back round again. Um, and then I put my tag on the side there. So there was that one. There's this one with bright pink, a white zip, and the flamingos on the inside. I've got one made out of old, I mean, like I said in my um, video at the time, all these fabrics were leftover bits and pieces. I didn't buy anything, so I haven't lost any money. I haven't forked out and, you know, lost anything. I was just using up bits and pieces in my stash. So this, this denim, I had, I think I'd bought to make a skirt or something, so that's got the peacocks and stuff written on the outside. <clears throat> this one, again in denim with a bright yellow zip and a floral interior. And one with mine on it and a turquoise zip. I tried to sort of mix them up a bit. This one's got some toadstools on the inside which is really cute that fabric I used to line a um, cape a sort of red riding hood cape for my daughter it had sort of mushroom fabric on the inside and then the last one has got bright yellow pink zip and lime green on the inside so yeah I was a bit disappointed to only sell one of those like I said I thought six pounds wasn't too much to ask given that I'd put sort of heat transfer vinyl on there and I um, had a couple of zips in my stash already and I just bought a couple of zips for a few pence at um, at Lucy's house, I think, when I popped over there. So, um, made by Lucy, by the way, I'll pop her details below. So yeah, I came home with all of that stuff. I was a bit crestfallen. I made a profit of about £8.50 by the time I took the price of the table out. Luckily, I shared a table with my mum, so... Um, we split the cost of that. She was really much more successful than me. She had lots of jewellery on, um, handmade jewellery to sell. And um, lots of people were looking for jewellery. It's just kind of like the luck of the draw, isn't it, really? So, yeah. Um, I made a load of headbands out of jersey, which I came home with. So the kids will probably, um, you know, have those in their bedrooms, in their stash of bits and pieces for their hair. So... There's just plain old jersey headbands. I did sell probably about three of these, uh, which I'd priced at £1.50, I think. And these were just scraps of jersey that I had left in my stash. So there's a few of those left. Um, and I came home with both of my embroideries. So <clears throat> I priced these at £5. Um... These ones I thought would be popular because it's kind of like a dictionary definition of mother, uh, but sort of like a jokey spin on it. Um, but I came home with both of those. So I think I won't be doing another um, school fair anytime soon. I will pop the things on my Etsy shop, see what happens with that. Obviously, there's a little bit more work involved because you had to figure out postage and packaging and all those kind of things, but it's all a learning curve. Um, yeah, I think that was it. My mum did a roaring trade in scrunchies. So I happened to be looking on Pinterest. I also love watching the Sew the Trends videos from the fold line and the stitch sisters have just started doing one as well looking at what's popular on the high street and i had been into town the day before and noticed that the 80s are coming back round i mean seriously they were bad enough the first time um you know oh but scrunchies uh kids kind of i thought they would love those so i suggested to my mum maybe if she had a chance and she wanted to to mix some scrunchies up and she did, and she managed to sell quite a few of those. I um, made myself one. Um, I'll try and pop in an image of the Pinterest um, inspiration picture uh, here, or here, here, I think. Um, 
and I wanted like a nice big blousy just a plain white one to pop my hair up and um, it's actually really comfy why do scrunchies go out of fashion they're really comfy so if I show you I've just popped my hair loosely it's probably not very tidy but if I turn around you can see that um, it's just yeah hooked my hair out of the way I hope you could see that then I can't see from behind but there yeah um, they're really kind to your hair they're comfortable they're nice to wear in bed they take two minutes to run up um, just literally a long tube that you turn the right way through and then fold the ends over on one end and pop the raw edges of the other end inside after you've put some elastic and tied a knot easy so yeah I um, I can see the scrunchy trend being something that I do take part in but most of the other 80s early 90s bits of fashion that are coming back round I'm not sure I'm going to partake but having said that wait six months and everybody will be wearing it so maybe I'll eat my words so um, moving on to my makes I have had a really exciting month I um, won a competition on Facebook by the, the Stitch Sisters they ran a competition I think it was all selected at random all you had to do was um, like their post and comment and share it and I did all of that and then I had um, a message from the lovely Nikki I think it was who said you've won um, so I was really pleased that made my day I have now got access to all their online sewing classes I'll pop it in the comment box below if you want to know their web address so you can check them out yourselves um, I've watched quite a lot of the tutorials I have not printed out any of the patterns yet because all oh, my brush up excuse me showing off my underwear um, I haven't printed out any of the patterns yet uh, because I haven't got any ink in my printer so I need to get that organized because one of the things I really want to make is the boho button bag and I have that beautiful fabric from Rome um, if you guys can't remember I will try and insert a picture of it and it's got flamingos on it and I really wanted to make a bag with that that I could keep forever and it would always remind me of my 40th birthday trip uh, which was a year ago now can you believe it I've been on um, YouTubing for a whole year it's actually my anniversary month this month so um, yeah I'm so grateful to everybody that's been there from the beginning and um, yeah, so the boho button bag, really want to make that. I um, have plans, hopefully, to get that done in the next month or so once I get the ink sorted out in my printer. But the first thing I wanted to make to cheer myself up when I had this horrible sore throat was the cactus pincushion, which, having watched the tutorial, is super easy. So it's a lovely class for beginners. If you haven't sewn ever before, you can make one of these. And they look really lovely, so I'll show you. What mine looks like here it is um, like I said I didn't have any ink in the printer so I kind of freestyled the pattern pieces and it's come out humongous I mean how big is this cactus pincushion but I luckily have a lot of pins so you know sat next to my sewing machine it's actually quite nice to have a bin big pincushion so you don't have to take your eyes off what you're doing you can just stab the pins in as you're going um, so yeah, this is just made out of an old Ikea blanket actually, uh, this sort of grey coloured fleece, or oh, it's greeny grey fleece which um, is from an Ikea blanket and then little flowers that I popped on made out of scraps of felt that I had in my stash. So again, I haven't purchased anything to make this, I all had all the supplies already there so uh, once this, <coughs> as soon as I, excuse me, <coughs> as soon as I'd watched the video I couldn't wait to get this made um, yeah and in fact it, it's catching cactus fever because my daughter saw my cactus and was like mommy I really really want a cuddly version of a cactus as like a toy so um, yesterday she made one she's got a little um, John Lewis red sewing machine and um, it's got a finger guard on it and she's been using it for years I've got three kids and they all have a go on this sewing machine it's literally I mean it's not a toy sewing machine it is an actual sewing machine a proper one I think it cost about 60 pounds maybe um, it's a basic I mean it won't do anything fancy 
but <clears throat> it's good for messing about, practicing, learning how to stitch in a straight line. So she had a go at that yesterday and she's desperately for, wants me to show you all her creation. So she made Mr. Cactus Head and this is her cuddly toy cactus. So she's, we used a glue gun for putting the feet on the bottom and attaching all her flowers and buttons because sewing the buttons on would have been quite fiddly for her. So she just glue gunned those on. But she did all of the sewing on the sewing machine herself and stuffed it herself and cut all the pieces out and she even got a moustache. So she was quite pleased with that and I can see that there's going to be a few of these cactuses around now. Or cacti, I don't know what the plural of cactus is. It's, maybe it's just cactus. Yeah. So, those are my bits and pieces so far. Let me just pop off and get something really exciting to show you. So just hang on one sec. So, I'm back with the most stunning gift I've ever been given, I think. Well... My husband has given me lovely gifts, but this was awesome. Um, I had my leaving due, so you guys who've been watching me before will know that I am a nurse and I left my long um, career in neonatal nursing uh, to pursue something different. And my colleagues were so, so kind and generous. They had a collection and they gave me the most awesome pair of scissors, so I will not tease you anymore. Um, they come in this gift box. They're by class or classe, I'm not sure how you say it, but I will um, pop some text on the screen so you know how it's spelled. These are rose gold scissors. There's an embroidery pair and a thimble in this gift box. And I'll just pop them out so you can see what makes them really special. So. What they've done is they have embroidered, embroidered, engraved, right words Carrie, um, love Nick you on there and so happy and oh I nearly cried when I opened them. In fact I will show you a picture of what I looked like when I opened them. Um, I'll insert one. Uh, yeah, they're just beautiful, beautiful scissors. And I've used them a couple of times. They just feel really special. They're super sharp. The fact that they are engraved just makes me want to keep them forever and ever. And I've got a little pair of um, stalk embroidery scissors there, or little snips. So they're really pretty. And also it came with thimble to match. So, yeah, I just felt so special when I opened those. It really made me want to cry. And they also um, gave me an extremely generous voucher for my local fabric shop. And oh, <clears throat> I am so excited to make a list of all the things I want to buy. There's actually going to be, I think, a Good Friday sale. So I am starting to think, what can I spend my voucher on? And guilt-free fabric shopping is the best. I mean, I don't even have to feel bad about it. I can just go in there and just splurge and I cannot wait. So as soon as I get that haul video up, you can see what I decided to spend my really generous voucher on. I also got a voucher for the same place on Mother's Day for my husband. Um, so that's made up to an enormous £100 to spend on fabric. So I am just made up. I don't know whether to spend it all at once or whether to wait and spend it on specific projects or what to do but I am I'm looking on Pinterest for inspiration and I'm getting ideas sorted ready for when I go in there. I think there's definitely going to be some patterns in there. There are some gaps in my pattern uh, collection that I really want to fill. Um, yeah and I, I think summer sewing is going to be so much fun this year because it's going to be free. All of that lovely lovely fabric. So yeah, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I don't know if any of my colleagues watched this video, but I was blown away and it made me feel really special and really sad to leave actually because they're such a great bunch of people. When you work in an intensive care environment, you're not really just colleagues, you're friends, you're family, you're comrades really because you go through so much together. So it really just blew me away. So thanks guys. 
Right, so I'm gonna move on. So you might wanna pause here if you're getting like thirsty and you need a cup of tea because there's a couple of items of clothing to show you that I've made this month. Um, I, first of all, I'll talk about the t-shirt I'm wearing. This is a Mandy Boat tee from Tsuti Patterns. Again, everything in the drop down box. I love the shape of this t-shirt. I've got two, one in sort of a gray and black stripe and this leopard print t-shirting, which I got from Fabricland. Um, I liked the color of this because it's kind of got a very subtle um, shading. It's not all cream. The background is sort of more of a taupe up here and more of a creamy white here. And it just kind of gives it a bit more depth. And the Mandy Boat Tea is a free pattern that you can download, which makes it even better. It's got a wide boat neckline, which like, as you've seen earlier, you have to just be a little bit cautious with your bra straps, but I've got nude ones on, so I don't think it matters too much. And you could always, if you were feeling um, like you wanted to, you could put a little loop of ribbon there with a popper or something just to hold it around your straps. Um, it's got really tight sleeves and um, I've tucked mine into my ready, ready to wear jeans, sort of, I think they call that a French tuck or something. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. Um, what should I start with? I will start with my scan and cut obsession. So slogan t-shirts are really big news this season. I've seen loads of people wearing them. In fact, I watched Lisa Comfort's video the other day and she had a really beautiful black slogan, um, a sweatshirt I think it was, or a long sleeve t-shirt. And so I have <clears throat> been like experimenting with different slogans on bits and pieces of clothing. Oh, there's a bit of fluff there. So um, I bought this uh, vest. It's a very simple vest from, was it Matalan, I think? It might have been Matalan. Just cheap, like three quid or something. And um, I put some gold lettering on there. And um, I tend to wear this when I'm running or, you know, just a little nod to the sewing um, side of me. And I didn't want to make something and then mess it up because I'm just really learning how to put this um, heat back vinyl onto things. I didn't want to go to all the effort and trouble of making an item of clothing and then screw it up by getting the lettering wrong. So, um, yeah, I've got some plans to make some more for the kids for the summer. My son's got a really cute one from H&M that has tigers, I think, all over it that says tropical on the front. So... I want to have a play around a bit more with the heat back to vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, because that's really fun. The next thing I've got to show you is, <clears throat> excuse me, coughing, a pair of pyjama bottoms. These I made using a piece of fabric that my mum happened to have in her stash and she's got no idea why. She must have bought it for some reason or another. So unfortunately there wasn't enough fabric to make matching father-son pyjama bottoms. So I cut my sons out first and I wanted to make sure I got the pattern placement just right. It's quite a big pattern on this fabric and um, I, it could have been, you know, a bit dangerous with these uh, lightsabers sticking out. So I didn't, we didn't want any pattern issues. Um, I placed his pattern really carefully. I didn't waste fabric but I carefully placed his pattern out. Then when I got to put my husband's pattern pieces on, I just couldn't get enough fabric. There wasn't enough. I mean, probably by about half a metre. If I'd had half a metre more, I would have been able to get them out. And I tried all sorts of um, pattern Tetris and it just wasn't going to work. So unfortunately, my husband still does not have an item of handmade clothing that I have made after all these years. He's always complaining that... He never gets anything. So um, I promise them both I will go on the hunt for um, probably a large duvet cover uh, um, because I don't want to be making things that cost vastly more money um, to make than to buy. I mean, that's just silly. Uh, you can get pyjama bottoms really cheaply and to buy enough fabric to make father-son matching pyjama bottoms would cost a fair amount of money. Um, so I, what I really want to do is I want to either go to the local charity shop or thrift store and find some really cool retro kids sort of duvet covers or something like that to make them out of. So that's the plan anyway. So these... Um, 
This comes from a pattern which I will pop a picture of um, in because I've forgotten to bring it with me. Um, and actually, they're really super shaped, these pyjama bottoms. They've got the right amount of baggy sort of ease that you want in a pyjama trouser. And I've used an elasticated waist, but I've put like a faux tie cord on them because I just think that makes it, finishes them off. It kind of is pyjama trouser looking, isn't it? So this is just a piece of, um, it's not even ribbon, I'm not even sure what you'd call this, that I had in my stash. And what I've done is I have just stitched it to that front seam there. Um, so it looks like it's coming out from inside the pyjamas, but it's actually not. It's just a trick. And um, I think it, they just, it just finishes them off nicely. You just tie them in a, in a nice bow. And yeah, so you can see. Super, super easy, super quick. I made them all on my overlocker, apart from the obviously having to stitch the hems and make the elasticated channel. <clears throat> Top tip, make sure you stitch your elastic down. There's nothing worse than elastic twisting round and round inside your waistband. So I always go round as a finisher and just put some stitches in the ditch on each of the seams just to stop that elastic from twisting. Um, also, if there wasn't this on the front, I would make sure that I put a tag in. I did put a tag in on these just so that you know the front from the back because that's the only other thing with handmade pyjama bottoms um, if there's nothing to discern which is the front and the back. So yeah, he's, my um, son is really pleased with those. He's, I had to wrestle him out of his pyjamas today because he didn't want to take them off. So that's always a good sign. Uh, my next make is a summer make so I did pick up the pattern here somewhere mm, can't find it I'll pop a picture in of the pattern for this one I subscribed to Love Sewing magazine they had a t-shirt pattern come out as a freebie and I thought I'd give it a go so <clears throat> this fabric is a cotton jersey from myfabrics.co.uk I think it was a present at Christmas and I've just made this really simple t-shirt. I will pop a picture of me wearing it or doing a twirl in it. Um, and I've made it specifically to go with the next item of clothing. So let's just talk about this t-shirt pattern for a start. It's, um, it's a nice basic simple shape. You have got um, ordinary sleeves which you set in on the flat, which I liked. The neckband is really quite wide and I was worried to begin with that it would uh, not sit flat but it actually does sit flat now I've top stitched it down so I've done twin needling on the neck there just to stop it from <clears throat> being too wrinkly but it's actually quite a wide neckband and actually that's kind of nice I think a classic t-shirt does have quite a wide neckband um, it fits really nicely I made it um, straight out of the packet with no adjustments I think I sized, I was, I was going to blend between sizes because the sizing on the pattern, I didn't fit perfectly into one or the other size and I was wondering, it was my hips that were a slightly wider size than my bust and I wasn't sure whether to grade between the two or just hope for the best because it's jersey fabric and that's what I did in the end. <coughs> Excuse me. So I... Um, I think I just cut a straight 12 but I'm, it might have been a 10 and um, it fits really well so yeah um, normally I'm a bit wary of patterns that I've never heard of before but I just thought you know what t-shirts they don't take much fabric um, if it goes wrong well how go how wrong can a t-shirt go anyway so I made that to go with my next make which is a Tilly in the Buttons Clio dungaree dress. So I talked about making one of these. This fabric is from Higgs and Higgs. I got it at the Knitting and Stitching show when I went just recently. And it's a really beautiful pale grey denim. And um, I've made the Clio once before out of a sort of standard navy denim or blue denim. And I wear it a lot in the summer months. They're really comfortable just to chuck on and wear with a pair of trainers or whatever. Um, I've got some really nice pink, pale pink trainers that I wear in the summertime. And I had this idea last year 
that I wanted to make a grey Clio dress and I never really got round to it or couldn't find the right denim for it so it's been kicking around in my brain for a while and I thought I was just going to crack on and get it done. So it's such a fun thing to make. I'm sure many of you guys would have seen this pattern before. Um, there's lots of top stitching so you can uh, refine your top stitching. I'm really, really proud of my top stitching on this one. I was really pleased with how crisp it is. I have to admit the only thing that really annoys me about this pattern is that the point on the bottom of the pocket doesn't line up with the centre of this faux um, flat felled seam. And uh, yeah, apart from that, which is a silly sort of um, bit of an OCD kind of a worry because I don't think anyone else would notice that but to me that's glaringly obvious that pattern that point does not line up in the middle there I'm just being picky now anyway <clears throat> there I didn't put any pockets on the back I kind of like that clean sort of straight no pockets on the front at the bottom either just a nice clean denim pinafore so I'm going to pop the t-shirt on and the pinafore on and I'll record a little twirl of me wearing them for you to see. So the final make I've got to show you is now no longer seasonally appropriate because it took me so long and was such a pain in the proverbial that actually I'm not going to wear this again until next winter now. But it was kind of an experiment as well. I looked on Pinterest, I saw lots of um, pictures of pleather or sort of, uh, what do you call it, PVC or fake leather skirts. <clears throat> and... I really fancied that uh, with a pair of black tights and a sort of oversized knitted top to wear with it. Um, I'll pop some of my Pinterest inspiration in for you to see. And uh, I bought some pleather from our local um, fabric land. And it's quite a thick pleather. And it literally was a pain in the pleather. I mean, honestly, I... Do not want to make another pleather skirt for quite some time. I finished it all beautifully and showed my husband and pulled the zip up and the zipper just came straight off the top of the zipper tape. I could have cried. It took me ages and in fact I had to unpick the zip twice to get it to look nice and you know, I mean you might not know, but when you sew with leather or pleather or anything like that you have to be really precise because you leave holes in the fabric. So. There is no room for like re-inserting zips over and over again and I'd already done it twice and then the zip broke and I literally could have thrown the skirt out the window and it sat on my sewing desk for a very long time until last night when I thought right I'm not going to be beaten by this project I will finish it. Um, <clears throat> I'm still not entirely sure whether or not I'm ever going to actually wear it out in the wild. I might do. Uh, we'll have to wait till next winter to see um, but I will show you so it's black guys I'm really sorry you're probably gonna find it hard to see this but um, this uh, skirt has got two darts in the front four darts in the back and then the infamous zip which I'm being honest it's not my best zip insertion ever because like I said, this is the third time I had to put it in and it made lots of marks in the fabric. So it's gaping a little bit at the top. Um, if I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist with things like this, I'd want it to sit a bit tighter together really, but I'm not, I'm picking it again. One of the things I learned about sewing with pleather is you can't do any of the things that you would normally do with normal fabric. So ironing, no go there you 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 have to finger press the seams or some some i did a lot of googling some people suggest using fabric glue to stick the seams down the darts i stitched down so you can see here i i ran a line of sort of like top stitching along the waist belt and stitched the darts down and actually they're not too bad they're sitting quite flat 
The vent at the back <clears throat> looks quite neat and you obviously cannot, um, it's very difficult to hem things when they're made out of pleather so I've left the raw edge at the bottom and it's just, I used a rotary cutter to make it really really sharp that edge. Um, yeah, the inside's a mess, I'll be honest. Um, I think if I was ever going to make another one, which I don't think I will, you seriously need to line leather skirts to hide all of the goings on inside. Okay, I found this on the web for you, seriously need to line leather skirts. How funny. <laughs> Siri, shut up. Excuse my phone interrupting. Um... Yeah, so I will pop a picture in, like I said, here. Also, I will pop details of the pattern I used. Um, I can't remember what the name of it is, but I will pop some words in here and hopefully a picture of the pattern so you can see. I've used it before. I made my mustard pencil skirt with it before. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I want to love it, but I don't think, because it caused me so much hassle, I don't think I do love it. We'll see. Maybe when winter rolls around, I'll be over it. I'll um, think, oh yeah, I've got that leather skirt in the wardrobe. I might try that on again and um, I will, yeah, enjoy wearing it. But for the moment, it's one of those projects that caused you so much hassle that actually you fall out of love with it halfway through. And I'm not someone to um, give up or um, not finish stuff. I, don't, I have very few um, unfinished projects because I like to finish even the ones that I don't like when I'm making them. So yeah, I will be back um, soon, hopefully, with another video with my plans for what I'm going to spend that enormous voucher for free fabric on and which patterns I'm going to choose and bits and pieces. I also owe you guys a tutorial. So um, thanks so much, everyone. I've had, I hit 3,000 subscribers a couple of weeks ago and um, to say thank you, I am going to record a tutorial on how to make the little popper bags. And then what I'll do at the end of the tutorial is I will give away the popper bag that I make to one lucky person that I'll choose at random. <clears throat> Not quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet, but you probably have to um, like and subscribe and share and then pop sort of um, a comment or something so I can pick you at random. But anyway, that is the plan for that. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe and like my video and I will see you next time.